everyone welcome back to the vlog i hope you're doing amazing this vlog is all about grades do not define you i wanted to do this because so many people i see on social media i've had a few inboxes as well from people worrying about grades like how do i get first how do i get this how do i get that and do you know what? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter whether you get a first, a 2-1, a 2-2, a 3, whatever. Um, it doesn't define the nurse that you're going to be. As long as you can be the best that you can be for your patient, that's all that matters. But I absolutely get it. I know I've been there. So as some of you might know from my previous stories that I've told, but I got the worst G GCSEs. Well, not the worst, but I got D's and E's and everyone normally asks for an A to C grade. I got D's and E's, which didn't really count for anything at the time. And that really knocked my confidence. I thought I wasn't smart enough. I wasn't good enough. But actually, I had a lot going on in my life at the time. Um, you know, 15, 16 years old is tough. You've got all these hormones going on. You've got life problems. Um, at the time, my nan had just died right smack, smack in the middle of my GCSEs. I had so much going on and I didn't give myself enough credit for actually achieving my GCSEs yeah I got D's and E's um but you know what I did it and I, 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 I passed in a way and then moving on when I finally got to university in my first year and I started to get 70% in um, well in my very first OSCE um I think I got 92% for my OSCE and I was just like what <laughs> how did that even happen oh my god and even if it's a grade that you're not particularly happy with, like my first ever assignment grade was 52%. And I was like, oh, okay, that's okay. It's a pass. It's fine. And then when I went into second year, I uh, my grades dipped a little bit again. So I was just like, what? Why? Why, God? Why? Why are you doing this? So that, I think second year is probably where it hits a lot of people. The grades just drop a little bit. And this is probably because you're still at that same level so in first year there's no real expectations it's level four it's it's just describing things it's not going into too much detail it's not too bad but then second year the bar goes up a little bit but you're still here so that bar is raised but you're still here so your grades are naturally going to fall back a little bit so you have to sort of up your game to get better grades if you want a better grade and i think that's where people fall down i know that's where i fell down i uh slipped the net there but then i suddenly realized what i had to do and get myself up to a standard where i'm going to pass and hopefully pass the whole degree um but but it is a worry and i know it i've i've been there i get it and nothing i tell you is going to think is going to make you think okay, I need to just stop worrying now and you'll just let it go. You'll probably always worry all the way to the end of your third year. And even when you're qualified, I still worry now about little things if I'm going to pass or not, like my recent course, for example. But you know what? I'm here to hopefully erase some of it and make you feel better about it. Firstly, the marker marking your assignments, your exams, um, OSCEs, things like that, all they've got is what they've got in front of them there and then. They don't see the months of planning that. They don't see the months of revision. They don't see the nights of stressing out, going on social media saying, SOS, help my assignment due in tomorrow. I hope that's not the case. Come on, guys, be organised. <laughs> um, but it doesn't it does not take into the fact your life problems, um, things that's happening in your personal life, your family life, your work life. It doesn't it does not factor into any of that. This person doesn't know you. This person doesn't um, know your life problems, maybe things like that. So all they've got is your assignment or your exam in front of you. And they're just going by that. And they're going against the marking criteria, the assignment brief and have you met it? Um and this is why I, I give this tip as well in one of my assignment writing vlogs. Go check it out if you haven't already. Um, but one thing I say is always go by. Don't listen to what lecturers say. Um, I mean, listen to what lecturers say. Sorry, guys, don't don't shoot me. Don't kill me off. Um, obviously, listen to your lecturers. But some lecturers say, oh, don't put this in, put this in. No, forget what they're saying because they're not marking your assignment potentially. You could have any single person marking your assignments. You want to go by the assignment brief and the marking criteria. And that's what I have up all the time on my laptop to make sure I pass because that's what I'm aiming for. If I can just meet every single potential criteria on there, I've passed. As long as you can meet everything, you've passed. And then if you wanted a better grade, you can write it in a way that might boost your grades up. 
anyway, sorry, distracted. But these grades, I hope you try and I hope you understand what I'm trying to say. These grades don't define you. And the best grades that you can get is when you've saved a patient's life or you're going out there and you, you, you know, this patient's deteriorating in front of you and you've helped them and you've got them back on track. Or maybe someone's just having a really bad day and you think, Do you know what, let's just sit down, have a cup of tea and you've made a difference to that patient's life. All these little tiny things makes you a really good nurse. And do you know what? That's priceless. You can't put a grade on that. And as long as you're striving to be your best self for your patients, you're protecting your patients, you're maintaining patient safety, you're doing everything in your power to care for your patients and not causing harm. Do you know what? That defines you more as a nurse than your grade. Nobody asks for your grade when you finish. I, trust me, I know, I've been there. I've been... I've had a few interviews, not one person asked me for my grades. My two jobs that I've had, no one asked me for my grade. Unless you want to like aim and go for like a PhD, master's, I think then, I think they asked for maybe a 2-1 potentially or above. But apart from that, just don't sweat it, guys. Like you are grilling yourselves to the ground, worrying about these grades when you don't need to. It does not matter. And you know what makes it worse? I think actually, and I'm absolutely guilty for this, is when people share their grades on social media and you're thinking, oh my God, this person's got 92%. That was me. Um, but I, I wasn't thinking of other people when I posted those grades out. I didn't think about how other people might feel if they failed something or if they didn't get the grade that they expected. I was posting it because I thought, you know what, this is an achievement. I've, I'm proud of myself for doing this and I want to share it with the world because look how far I've come. It was one of those sort of moments. It wasn't a, oh, look at me, I've got this. Because trust me, I got terrible grades as well. It, they, they, sort, they sort of counterbalance themselves out. One of my biggest tips that I can give you is stay off social media when results day is out because if you get a grade that you're not expecting or lower than expected or you potentially might not have passed first time, or even second time, and then you go onto social media and you're seeing everyone passing and yeah, I've passed my assignment, yeah, I got 70%, yeah, I got a first. That's gonna make you feel like crap. Um, and you're gonna think, oh, everyone else is passing. And you don't see the rest of the failures because no one posts their failures. No one posts the downfalls. Um, so you're just gonna see these one or two people that are passing out of the your cohort of 200, 150 people, but you're gonna focus on that one or two or five, that handful, small handful of people that did amazing and got really good grades. And that's all you'll focus on. And then you'll think, God, I'm the only person that's failed. I'm the only person that got this rubbish grade. I'm the only person that isn't doing well. And it's not true. It's absolutely not true. And this is what my biggest tip is. You need to remind yourself, this is just one person. That's fine, that's great for them. Focus on yourself, focus on your grade and think about, okay, so what does that mean? What does that realistically mean? I've got 40%, let's say, I've, I've just made the, part, the pass rate. One of my grades was 42%. I literally was on the tipping point of that. And then other people were getting like 70s and 80s and that was me and I was thinking, wow, what did I do wrong? Like, where am I going wrong? But you can't think like this. You need to think, okay, what does this mean now? So the first steps you want to take is look at your feedback on your assignment, on your exams. If the feedback isn't very good, you know, it's a little bit wishy-washy and you're thinking, oh, I need a bit more feedback than this to improve. Email the person that marked it, get in touch with that person, sit down with them if you can, have a meeting with them if you can, and just say, I, I want your help. Where can I improve? Where did I lose points? Um, and once they explain it to you and show you physically where you're going wrong or bits that really need improving, then you then it'll just help you to understand what's happening and it'll just make you feel so much better. This is something that I personally do and did back then. I recently did it for my own, the, like the foundations of GP nursing course. I asked for more feedback because I don't want to then go on to a master's or something and then fail because I'm not good enough. Um, I want that constructive criticism to help me move forward and help me pass a master's if I wanted to do that. And this is what I did back then as well. So I sent an email to the people that marked those things and said, where can I improve? Um, and they sent really useful, constructive feedback back to me and said, these are the areas where you could have improved. You could have written more about this. You could have added this. 
but these are the areas that are really really good these really stand out so they don't just show you the weak they show you the positives of your assignment and what they liked so just think about doing that because it will really 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 help you and it'll help you understand the grading system and all of that jazz and then my next tip for when you're feeling really rubbish about your grades is look how far you've come like first you firstly you got into university a lot of people didn't get there a lot of people they would have rejected and you're there you're at, you're in nursing you're doing one of the best jobs in the world if you ask me um and if you're at the very very start if you're in first year and this is your first assignment your first exam your first grade that you've got back and it's not very good or it's not the grade it's not the grade you expected um, it's okay. Like this is your first assignment. Everyone is gonna struggle. I think initially, like everything is so overwhelming. You've just started this course. You've got so much overload. Also, we're in a pandemic right now. Come on, guys. Um, but if this is future in the line and you're watching this and there's no pandemic anymore, that is still going to be stressful. Uh, we're short of nurses. I'm assuming in the future we are still short of nurses. <laughs> And it's tough and the exams are tough, the assignments are tough and they're written in a way that you really don't understand them. So please just be kind to yourself. That is the most important thing. You know, think, OK, do you know what? I've done this and this and that's amazing. And it's OK to have your moment. It's OK to to feel like crap you know we are human we're not robots we're not going to be going around like suddenly positive and springing in our steps and all sorts it's okay to have a day off get under the duvet cry have a hot chocolate have some chocolate whatever you want to do to make you feel that little bit better do more of that but don't let it consume you guys don't let it eat you up so so much that it's affecting your life Guys, it's not worth it. Honestly, your health is far more important than anything else right now because you have to be your best self so that you can be the best person you can be for your patients. So please don't live there. Take your moment, take a day, take a week, however long you need, but don't live there. Get back on the horse, get out there and smash it next time. And as always, if you're really, really struggling and um, you took a downward spiral turn, please get help, support, speak to your friends, speak to your family, speak to university. If you need more time, if you need to d defer anything, get in touch with people and let it be known because no one's going to know how you're feeling if you're just bottling it up inside and you're just making you feel worse and worse and you're slowly chipping away and eventually you just crack. So please get help, get support and make sure that you are okay. And as always, my inbox is always open for anyone that's struggling. Please message me. I will always reply. I mean, I can't do your exams and assignments for you, but I can hopefully give you some constructive feedback or advice or anything like that that might just help you along. And if you just need someone to say, do you know what? Get your crap together and get on with it. Um, I will be that person for you as well. <laughs> But yes, final message, grades do not define you. Who you are as a person and how you are as a nurse out there in practice is the best that you can be. So go out there, guys, protect your patients, care for your patients and do the best you can be. Push that grade aside. Thank you.